Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Earthquake hit Turkey and Syria will receive 7 billion euros in aid. This was announced by European nations taking part in a European Union conference of donors. The Monday conference was hosted by the European Union itself and Sweden. Swedish Prime Minister Ulf Christensen said that the money pledged will help rebuild lives that were destroyed in a matter of seconds. 1 billion euros come from the European Commission and half of it will be spent through the European Investment Bank. However, Turkey has said that what is needed is 10 times more than that amount to rebuild the quake-struck region that borders Syria. During the 52nd session of the Human Rights Council in Geneva, Secretary of the Dicastery for Evangelization Archbishop Fortunatus in Wachuku highlighted the plight of individuals and communities who are suffering because of their religious convictions. He reiterated the Holy Father's appeal that peace also comprises universal recognition of human rights. He said it is troubling that people are being persecuted just because they profess their faith. The Archbishop said in many countries, religious freedom is under threat. About a third of the world's population lives in these countries. Archbishop Inwachukwu also shed light on the tightening of repressive measures and abuses in several countries. He said they were being orchestrated by national authorities against religious minorities. The Conference of Catholic Bishops of EU States, or COMESE, and the Federation of Catholic Family Associations in Europe inked an agreement to enhance further cooperation in the field of family policies at the European Union level. The memorandum was signed by Cardinal Jean-Claude Hollerich, who heads COMESE, and Vincenzo Bassi, president of FAFCE. The prelate said that it is essential to support families and look at the problems that they face. The memorandum will enable both entities to benefit from each other's expertise. FAFCE will henceforth be an observer member to the meetings of the Commissé Social Affairs Commission. The prelates of all European Union states will also benefit from the grassroots level experience in the field of family policies offered by entities that are part of FAFCE. In the American state of Missouri, the Attorney General has brought out emergency regulations to impose guardrails on gender-changing procedures for minors. Attorney General Andrew Bailey issued a statement on Monday in which he said that he was issuing an emergency regulation explaining how gender transition procedures are experimental. He said they come under the state law concerning unfair, deceptive and unconscionable business practices. Bailey said as Attorney General he will protect children and enforce the laws as written, which includes upholding state law on experimental gender transition interventions. He also cited the example of European countries which have realised that children are being mutilated for the sake of a woke leftist agenda. He also pledged to use all tools at his disposal to protect children. An Iranian human rights outfit has alleged that the state has executed 144 people since the beginning of this year. The allegation was made by Iran Human Rights. Other rights outfits are alleging that the Islamic nation has intensified its execution spree in a bid to intimidate those taking part in protests against the government. Iran Human Rights and the Hengal Organization for Human Rights reported that seven people belonging to the Kurdish minority were recently given the death sentence. While five were executed for drug-related offences, one Kurdish man named Ibrahimi was killed for prolonging to an outlawed Kurdish group. Meanwhile, the United Nations Special Rapporteur of Human Rights in Iran, Javid Rehman, said that in four decades, the most serious violations took place in the country after the September 16th custodial death of Masa Amini last year. Prosecutors in Germany said on Tuesday that they initially probed the alleged involvement of the late Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI in covering up clerical sexual abuse when he was the Archbishop of Munich. The allegation was later dropped, however. They examined 45 possible cases spanning from 1945 to 2019. Cardinal Ratzinger, who later became Pope Benedict XVI, served as the Archbishop of Munich and Freising from 1977 to 1982. A report brought out by a legal firm commissioned by the Archdiocese alleged that the Archbishop mishandled four cases. Before he passed away in December last year, the Pope Emeritus has sought forgiveness for any grievous faults while handling cases of clinical abuse. However, he denied any personal wrongdoing. The others who were investigated include Cardinal Friedrich Wetter, who was Cardinal Ratzinger's successor in Munich 
and Father Gerhard Kluber, who served as the Vicar General. Sam Brownback, who served as Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom under former President Donald Trump, has alleged that a new proposal by the Joe Biden administration will have a negative impact on religious freedom in public universities. He was criticising the US Department of Education's plan to rescind a rule which made it easier for faith-based student outfits to complain against discrimination based on their religious beliefs. The controversial proposal was published in the Federal Register last month. The former Republican governor of Kansas, Birnbach, warned that the new proposal ignores the First Amendment rights of religious clubs on campuses. The Biden administration is looking at rescinding what is known as the Free Inquiry Rule that was adopted during the latter part of the Trump administration. Those universities that did not abide by it were deprived of federal funds. In the United States, Wyoming has joined 18 other states by enacting a new law that prevents male students from taking part in girls' sports. Governor Mark Gordon did not sign or veto the bill on Friday, paving the way for it to be enacted in July. Senate Enrolled Act 92, which is also known as Senate File 133, says that a student of the male sex shall not compete and a public school shall not allow a student of the male sex to compete in an athletic activity or team designated for students of the female sex. It also says that a government entity or licensing or accrediting organisation shall not entertain a complaint, open a probe, or take action against a school for having separate school athletic activities and teams for students of the female sex. Uyghur Muslim activists appealed to the International Criminal Court on Monday to probe the genocide of their brethren in China's Xinjiang province and issued an arrest warrant against Chinese President Xi Jinping. They made this appeal a few days after the ICC issued an arrest warrant against Russian President Vladimir Putin for the illegal deportation of children from Ukraine to Russia. Washington DC-based East Turkestan government activists, along with the East Turkestan National Movement, have called for a probe and arrest warrant against Xi. Citing the fact that the court does not have jurisdiction in China, the ICC has repeatedly rejected filings that called on it to probe reports of atrocities in Xinjiang province. Prime Minister Sali Hudayar of the East Turkestan government in exile said the ICC should act and hold Chinese leader Xi accountable for the ongoing genocide and crimes against humanity inflicted on the Uyghurs. Bill Donoghue, the president of the US-based Catholic League, which is an advocacy outfit, has commented on how the church is being attacked in China and Nicaragua. He said that what is happening in both countries merits immediate intervention. He said there is a veneer of religious freedom in China, but it is in fact dictated by the Communist Party. The state is using advanced surveillance methods to make sure that worship content adheres to the ideology of the Communist Party. Children under 18 years of age are not allowed in churches. As part of President Xi's sinicization project, the government wants to assimilate all religious entities under communist rule. Donahue also decried the crackdown on the Catholic Church in Nicaragua, led by the President Daniel Ortega regime. He has accelerated the pace of persecution by expelling religious congregations, arresting priests and bishops, and shutting down Catholic radio and television stations. In a first of its kind, a monument to Pakistani Catholic martyr and servant of God Shabazz Bati has come up in a village in the Faisalabad district in the form of a mother and child health facility, named after the martyr who was killed on the 2nd of March in 2011. The health facility was constructed with the generosity of Italian Catholics belonging to the Diocese of Treviso, where the brother of the sainthood candidate works. The project was undertaken by the Missione Shabazz Bati in Treviso, Funds were raised for the project during the Episcopal consecration of Treviso native Bishop Giuliano Brugnotto, who is the Bishop of Vicenza. The facility will provide medical services in that area, which lacks proper health care amenities. Bati was the first Catholic to become a federal minister in Pakistan. He worked for the abolition of the infamous blasphemy law, which is used to target Christians in the Muslim-majority nation. The Calgary City Council in Canada has passed a new law that criminalises any form of protest near the venue of drag queen events held for children in libraries. The council voted by 10 to 5 to pass a new bylaw last week to ban all sorts of protests. Named the Safe and Inclusive Access Bylaw, it has gone into effect already. Any form of protest targeting any race, 
religion, gender, gender status, gender expression, disability, age, or sexual orientation must not take place within 100 metres of a public library or the city's recreational centre entrances. Under the new bylaw, violators can be punished with a fine of over $7,000 or up to one year in prison. When the law came into effect, Pastor Derek Reimer of Mission 7 Ministries was arrested and charged with one count of breaching a release order that banned him from being within 200 metres of LGBT event venues. In the state of Ohio, pro-life outfits are funding an ad campaign that scrutinises the proposed amendment that seeks to enshrine abortion as a right in the state constitution. The $5 million campaign is funded by Protect Women Ohio. The television and social media ads will be aired over the next four weeks. During this period, a coalition of pro-abortion outfits is trying to garner more than 400,000 signatures needed to put the proposed amendment to a vote in November. The Ohio Ballot Board approves the amendment's language last week. It says every individual has a right to make and carry out one's own reproductive decisions, including but not limited to decisions on contraception, fertility treatment, continuing one's own pregnancy, miscarriage care and abortion. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And do remember in the meantime, you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.